In this video we're going to look at setting up the on-click listeners as well as setting up the conditional statements which will run if a certain object is clicked. And so to do that I'm going to start off right here by typing in um, the first object that I wanted to listen for and that's going to be my B1. And so my Java code is going to be the B1 here and you know that references the XML button that we've created called button 1. So anytime that button 1 is created on my graphical side we're gonna, it's going to reference it here as B1. So now that I've got it set, I'm going to go ahead and basically what's going to be called just setting the on click listener or basically letting it know that it needs to be listening or my code needs to be listening for this particular button for any changes or any click events that happen within this particular button. So to do this, I just type in B1 and then it's going to be now just the period and we're going to go ahead and say set on click listener and then the parenthesis and make sure that you use the right case sensitivity for this one too because everything in here is case sensitive instead of anything that you see already coming up what we're going to do is type in the keyword now this and I'm going to go ahead and end that with a semicolon and that's going to be a keyword that's going to reference this particular method in this class and so it's referring to this particular one which is kind of a nice little shortcut that we've got I was able to do this here by implementing the onclick listener up here on the class. So this makes it kind of nice and convenient to work with. And so we want to do the same thing for button two because button two can be clicked on. So we want to do the exact same thing. So I'm just going to rewrite the code here for button two. B2 dot set on click listener. And then the word this. And then we're going to go ahead and end that with a semicolon. And if you're familiar with Project 1, you may like this a lot better doing it this way than what we did in Project 1. Now that I've got this set up, what I'm going to do is come down here to the on click event that I've got. And you can see where it says view, and then we've got this letter V here, which is my parameter I'm going to be passing in. What I wanted to do is I wanted to compare which button or determine which button was actually clicked. And so within this particular method, which is going to be from this curly brace until this curly brace right here, Within this one here, uh, it's going to be basically V. We're going to be listening for V. And we want to know whenever V ends up being equal to either B1 or B2. And that may be a little bit confusing at the moment, but if you write it enough and you start looking at it and running the code, it's going to become familiar to us. And so how we actually are going to test whether or not V is either B1 or B2 is we're going to write some conditional statements. And so I'm going to start off by writing what's called an if statement. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in if and then in space and then we're going to go ahead and put in a set of parentheses here now what's in the parentheses is what's going to be uh, conditioned to see if it's true or not and so what I want to put in here is if V ends up equaling B1 meaning they're the same thing so I'm going to put in there if V equals and it's going to be two sets of equal signs and I'm going to put in B1 and now I want to explain why it's two equal signs if we use one equal sign within this language, it's going to be to set something's value, like taking this and setting it as B1, which you can see on this particular line here. Whenever we want to compare something for equality, we're going to need to use two equal signs. And this is just typical Java language uh, code, and a lot of programming languages use it this way, where you use more than one equal sign for comparison values. So we're saying if these two things are the same thing, meaning if we clicked on something, and in here it's going to be called V, but out here it's called B1. If they are the set to be the same thing, run my code. Now after this, you would think that maybe I would put a semicolon, but what I need to do is I'm going to have multiple lines of code that are going to run if this condition was true. So what we need to do is put a curly brace. And I want to point this out. If I put a curly brace, what I really want to point out is the fact that if you look at my curly braces here, I've got an opening one, and then I'm going to have to have an ending one here. And so I need to make sure that I've got the right amount of curly braces set um, when we're all said and done. But I'm going to go ahead and hit enter now. And if you hit enter, if I look down here, all of a sudden I've just generated myself an extra curly brace. And so I have a curly brace that matches with this one now. It automatically generated. And when I first started typing some of this code, I kept wondering why I kept getting extra curly braces or ending curly braces. And that's because I automatically generated it here on my if statement. So this one will match up with this one. And then this one right here matches up. In fact, if you click on it or highlight it, you'll see that this one kind of lit up here. 
it gives us an indication of which one goes to which one and then this one comes here goes all the way to the very top of my code so I wanted to have three curly braces at this point at the end and these this right here is a block of code that will run if button one was the one that was selected so now as you can imagine we want to do the same thing for button two so after this curly brace it's right here I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and I'm going to just space down a little bit further here to give myself some room to type. We're going to do another if statement. So I'm going to go ahead and say if, if, and now we say v is going to be equal to v2. Then I want to run this certain code. So after this, I'm going to go ahead and put an opening curly brace, and I'm going to hit enter, and you'll see that it automatically generated the closing curly brace for this particular block of code, so this condition that I've got here. So now we've got the two conditions. If B1 is selected, the code that I need to run is going to be put in here. If B2 is selected or clicked on, then this is the code in this block right here that needs to be run or needs to run in order for um, my application to work correctly. So this has been setting up the conditional statements and the on-click listeners for button 1 and button 2. In the next video, we're going to look at actually using a counter integer to be able to increment and decrement our numbers, and we're going to be using that as an integer.